Welcome back to Project Brew Pig. Oh, we got these in. Now we need to close the roof up. But before I do that, I've got something I want to share. We've taken a sunken fishing trawler and converted her to a community funded expedition and research boat crewed by volunteers from around the world. Because life's too short not to fight for your dream. Without having any money to be able to allocate towards solar, we were really wondering how we were going to solve this challenge. This is what I wanted to talk to you about. Whatever could it be, this little box. Let me show you. So, we were getting really panicky because we have to figure out a way to do solar because we're powered by solar and wind. We had to think about it and we thought, what would be the dream thing that we could want on Brewpeg? Like, the best panels, the best system, the company that we want to work with, like, what would it be? And Dame got in touch with them. Bujavi. They make the most amazing panels. It's a different kind of panel than you'll be used to. It's made differently, it's different technology. So, let me just pull it out. You'll notice that it's rolled up. <laughs> we'll go into a lot more detail when we start putting them on. But what I want you to see is look at that. You can walk on these things, they glue on. And they're really good when it comes to shading. These are not like normal flexible panels. These are six panels, the same technology that's used in the military. Vuja V have been awesome. And we don't have just a few panels. We have five more kilowatts of power possible on Brewpeg. And this is how it's a lot of solar and we are absolutely gobsmacked <laughs> that the impossible, what seemed impossible, is now possible. We just put to them what our dream would be and they were so supportive. So more on that in future episodes. I'm looking forward to showing you us installing this on Brewpeg. So now the motor's in, we thought it would be really good to talk about how do we get this motor up and running and get Brewpeg moving. We're going to take you through the steps we're going to go through. A big thank you to Ali P. Ali explained to us when she's watching that some jobs she'd like to maybe contribute to ideas or um, know in advance so she can, you know, she's got a lot of experience as a lot of you do, or a lot of ideas, or you see things we don't because, you know, we're immersed in this project. So we thought we'd do this, getting the motor ready and, and working a little bit differently. In about three to four weeks, we'll start working on the motor when all the parts are here. And what we thought we'd do is, in advance, tell you what we're going to be working on the next week. So it gives you a chance to give us feedback, um, ideas, disagree, agree, whatever. We love your feedback. And, and just to a um, friendly reminder, you know, don't be a jerk. If you're commenting just to put someone down in the project or to make us wrong, a lot of people enjoy doing that. It makes them feel, you know, whatever. We don't like that, but we love your feedback, including negative feedback. So we're just going to go through what we're going to be working on. We're going to do an overview right now, and then when we start working on it, we'll give you advance notice of the next thing we're going to be we're going to be doing on the motor. Engine. <laughs> motor. Engine. Motor. You had it right the third time. Engine. <laughs> That's <laughs> just for you guys who keep reminding me. Brain injury. Sorry, I just can't remember words. Because it really matters. <laughs> well, I understand it's annoying, you know, but I do my best. We do our best. I might be able to clarify it. All engines are motors, not all motors are engines. First things first, we've got to get the motor dropped. It's sitting on blocks, it landed on blocks from the crane work. So now we have to get it bedded in the beds. <laughs> so there's a little bit of a difference with this motor because the gearbox is wider than we expected. So we're going to have to do something a little bit different. In order to align the engine and gearbox with the propeller shaft, we need to drop the whole assembly down into this engine area down here. We can't do that at the moment because this gearbox is too wide. What it hits on is this engine bed on this side and the same on the other side. The reason being is because these engine beds protrude inwards from the hull. The hull is basically just over here and these flat beds protrude in. We need to actually cut these off and then make beds that are wider. So we're not, we're not going to be modifying the hull, we, we're just going to be modifying the beds and moving the beds out. Once we've done that, we can drop the whole motor and gearbox assembly down so that this output shaft aligns with the prop shaft. Now, before we can do the final alignment, we need to have an adapter. This is metric and this is imperial, and the adapter allows us to bolt the two of them together. 
and the alignment relies on whatever this tells us it needs to be. So the engine will move it up and down, left to right, side to side, etc., to get this and this aligning absolutely perfect between these two faces. And once that's done, then we'll start building the engine mounts to suit. A while ago, we had an awesome guy from Sweden come to the boat. He's a naval architect in charge of building big ships. He went through the boat with Damien, and one thing that he let us know about was mounting. If you look here, you can see this is shimmed. Um, that's the way most people usually do mounts or rubber mounts. Now there's a new thing called chock fast. Chock fast is a really fast but incredibly accurate way to get your engine mounts at the right height. So in each of these engine beds, there's a hole with a thread in it. So there's, you've got your big bolts holes here. This is what you bolt it all down with. And you've got a hole there and a hole there that's threaded. Basically you put a, a bolt into that and you just wind it to get your heights exactly as you need it. Once you're happy with it, you build a little dam with some plastic around it and then pour epoxy in. It's, a, it's chock fast epoxy and it sets like concrete and it's um, up to survey standards. Basically what it allows you to do is have a single layer mounting system so instead of having shims where you've got multi layers of metal where they potentially can rust between them and fail chock fast doesn't rust it's epoxy but it is a single piece of material so that it, it just can't break down and it's now um, it's a survey approved material so that's what we're going to be using when we mount our engine one of the most interesting things that i love on brewpeg is aligning the engine and the gearbox to the shaft Aligning this shaft to this output shaft on the gearbox looks a bit daunting, but it's actually pretty straightforward. I'll be using what's called a dial gauge with a magnetic base, and it, it clamps onto, onto this shaft here with a magnet, and I can rotate this shaft around and use a dial gauge and get find exactly center in here, down to like one, thou, one thousandth of an inch, and then that tells me where the center to center is, is aligning. So I can get them basically aligning, so if this gearbox is slightly off, the dial gauge will help me bring it in so that it's absolutely perfect. Then I bring the two of them together using feeler gauges and I can go through and get the shafts within about one thou. The chock fast system makes it much simpler to do the alignment compared to shims. The previous engine I had down to one and a half thou um, of, you know, of out of alignment, which is completely within the, the nine thou spec. Yeah, it's a pretty straightforward way of doing it. It's how they've done shaft alignments for the last 200 years. So you're not going to use fancy lasers I'm or I'm not anything? going to use lasers. I won't be using the internet and I, and I don't need to do any mail order shaft alignment. <laughs> All I'm doing is using feeler gauges and a, a magnetic dial gauge and we'll be good to go. We like it where we can keep things simple. Yep, we do. Yep. Those eagle eye viewers will notice that we have two fuel filters. This has been cut because uh, we weren't sure where we were going to put this. So that's the next stage of getting the engine sorted out is where to put this. We'll come back to you about that um, in a later episode and uh, get some feedback from you guys. We have some ideas where we might put it. Previously, those filters were mounted just in front of me here. That's gonna be in the way of the get home motor, the path to walk across the engine room, and the gen set. We didn't know that at the time when we mounted them. So we cut them off knowing that they're gonna be in the way and we'll put them in a different spot. So you're pretending to be the gen set right now? I am currently the gen set. <laughs> the gen set is played by an actor. Um, <laughs> you can see the boxes. Yeah. There's, a, there's going to be a gap, so you can work on so the, the genset. The genset will probably sit about here somewhere, so it's going to be tight to get your hands down, but you can get your hands down either side of the genset. This is the 50 kVA, yep. and this one here, which was donated by the lovely Trev. So this is the little one, and then we're going to have the big one. Big one will sit right here, and that's what these mounts were for originally. This is where Brewpig used to have a genset. So you can see where the motor's located. Gen set will be yep. right at the back of that. Right, right here. One thing I do need to do is put in a big one inch high volume fuel transfer pump. So it's a, it's a really big, powerful 240 volt pump that transfers fuel from the front of the boat down to the back end of the boat here. That's all gonna be mounted in the same area. So there's gonna be a large pump and a couple of big filters and, and a whole bunch of ball valves as well. So there's, there'll be a wee bit of plumbing that we have to do and where all of that goes yet, I haven't quite decided. And when you say a big pump, can you show me how big you mean? So this is our main fuel transfer pump. This is high volume transfer between tanks. It's not an engine feed pump. This is something that needs to be mounted with the fuel filters, ball valves, manifolds, all that sort of thing. We've got a few ideas as to where we want to put this stuff, but we haven't locked anything in because we don't really know. So wherever these get located, we've got to run them from the access to the diesel at the back, through these filters, to the injection pump. One of the easier jobs we need to do is connect coolant. This is the top radiator hose on the engine. We've got our bottom radiator hose down here by the water pump, and they need to connect to our two keel cooling pipes down there. And yes, we will be cutting the cooling pipes off the bottom of brew peg when we start looking at getting to Antarctica. It's made of heavy wool pipe, perfectly strong enough to handle most things. You could even rest the boat on it, 
But ice creams are a different matter. We don't want to have anything that's at risk when we're somewhere like Antarctica. So we will be doing an internal system, uh, but we'll talk about that at a later stage. Exhaust. Needs to go in there. The old one didn't. So we're gonna to have to redesign it a little bit. We can reuse all of the original exhaust that was built for Brewpeg, the lovely stainless exhaust that was made for us. The only thing we have to do is modify the end slightly. So it's a little bit of TIG welding, nothing too dramatic. And of course electrics, we have to get it connected up. That's alternator, starter motor. Yes, you heard that right, hooking up an electric starter motor. Now I know a lot of people have told me that we should be going with electric starter motor rather than air start. And that's great, but we are going with the air start. The only reason we're hooking the electric starter motor up is right now we don't have our air start working. The reason we're getting rid of electric start is batteries don't like going down much below zero and we have a lot more redundancy with air start. So we are sticking with air start, but right now we're gonna be hooking it up as electric. Because remember, things change on a project of the size, complexity, funds available, energy to do jobs, parts, all of that stuff changes things. A lot of people are really judgy and like you should do it right the first time. Well, if you have the finances and you have the house and you have everything else you need, of course we would have. But this has been going for a while and we've been trying to get launched a number of times. So we've been prioritizing what jobs we do and what we use, knowing that we'll change some things out as finances make that possible. And, and of course we need to make some brackets to get the throttle and the gear cable Attached. We have to make sure that none of the mechanical parts of Brewpeg wear out. Things like rudder shafts, prop shafts, gearbox, engine, etc. They all need oil changes, grease, and so on. We have to make some grease lines for our rudder, our prop shaft, and our stern gland. Those lines were all ripped out when we put the tanks in, and we need to make new ones of those. We also need to make an easy system on the gearbox. This is the oil drain for the gearbox. And it's a pain in the ass to get oil out of this gearbox without getting it all through the bilge and therefore getting pumped over the side and causing environmental damage. So we're going to be putting a pipe into here that comes up to an electric pump. Exactly the same system will be on the main engine. That way when we do oil changes on these, we can just flick the pump on and empty the oil out and then pour new oil in. It allows us to then protect the environment and also protect the engine room so we don't get oil throughout the place. In the early days, we were talking to someone about how to vent this room. And Dame came up with the idea of hiding the vents rather than having like a stack above. And we love the idea that the issue is getting enough air in and out. Uh, and we think these will work fine. So you can see here on the outside, Dame built these angle vents and there's two on the other side. So air out, we're going to use this fan. I'm going to build a box here. The exhausts are all running up here as well. The air will be forced out that way. Should be plenty. So that get home motor actually sits up here above the gearbox. And then there's a hinge mechanism which disconnects the electric motor from the drivetrain when we don't need it. So we're not spinning that motor needlessly. But it has a set of belts that basically run from the output on the electric motor down to the propeller shaft. The coupling that Daniel's making has a big um, belt drive mechanism on it so that we can connect that get home motor to the shaft. So that forms our secondary form of propulsion in Brewpeg. So if the gearbox or main engine ever stopped working for whatever reason, we can't get it fixed then we've got a second way of, of spinning that propeller and getting home. We can steam at about five knots using that 30 kilowatt motor. The other thing we wanna do is actually clear coat the gearbox. I know that sounds pedantic, but when we had one of these gearboxes new uh, eight years ago and we bought it, it took about three years before it started going rusty. And you can start to see here the paint, it's a little bit light. So we just wanna go through, put some clear coat over it so that we can protect the gearbox from going rusty for the long term. And also when this gearbox was painted, it was obviously sat on a pallet or something like that and the very bottom part of it isn't rusty. So if you look here on the gearbox when it's being lifted up by the crane, the very bottom you can see it's a different colour. That's primer and a little bit of surface rust. So we want to go through and put some good two-pack primer on the bottom and then give that a paint as well. Now that we've closed up this hatch, it's time to have a look at the big hole in the roof. We're just cleaning the edge of the tarp that we used the other day for this hole. We're going to tape it on. Uh, so nothing comes into the saloon below. Just mess it on the end and wipe it down. Get the dust off so the tape will stick. We just saw uh, Ian who was here who helped us with the galley build um, quite a while ago now. And he's back. He's about to finish his boat and head into the water. So hi Ian. <laughs>
Before we can weld this, we need to go around with a grinder and clean off around about an inch all the way around this edge here, both top and bottom, and that allows us to paint without too much um, drama or rubbish getting into the welds and causing contamination. Normally in this workyard you don't have to be too precious about grinding and welding, however our neighbour has just had his boat repainted, so Jess is performing weld sparkle duties to make sure that none of the stuff that we create ends up on their paintwork. Now that I've gone through and ground up this edge on both sides, both the, the, the deck and this plate, I need to go through and weld some pieces of metal about say 50 mil long, two inches long, onto this piece of steel here, and then they'll hang out over the side. What that means is when we slide this into the hole, it will sit flush with this piece of roof. Um, and we don't have to go muck around trying to get them aligned all the time, they'll basically self-align. So probably put about eight of them on here, it's probably a bit excessive, but it just means that the job becomes easier and faster overall. It's important when you're running a YouTube channel to capture key moments on video, just like the key moment that we didn't catch because the camera wasn't recording when we put this on. But let me show you what we've got. So we've got tabs welded. You can see these sort of tabs spaced around, around the perimeter all the way around there. Now what these do is hold it level. So I can press down on this and this here will end up leveling up. It's not at the minute, but it'll get pretty close. Um, and it also means we can monitor our gap really closely. So we want this gap to be the same all the way around so when we tuck this one down here with my foot you can kind of see that gap there that gap there they're pretty close to each other it sort of follows all the way around that gap's pretty nice and uniform and even all the way around which is exactly what we want so we want to have a gap so we can fill it up with welds if these two plates were touching when i weld it one of them will probably this one but one of them will bow so by having a gap it means that you can weld it and then they'll shrink and pull into each other rather than try and buckle I need to bring this up
and see the sun Side by side our fears are done All the good times just begun Let's hold on tight Found what we're looking for in life Call us crazy But things are finally right Super stoked about that, that welded in really nice. Let me show you some of these welds close up. So there's like long runs, all pretty much bang on consistent. And that goes right the way around. There's a few more there, another run along there. That's not something that I've ever been able to do with our older machines. That is something that I absolutely put down to the new welder. I put it down to the new welder because if anything I've actually got worse with my welding because I haven't been doing any MIG welding for so long. So um, this was a great sort of test to get back into the swing of things and get some MIG welding done but there's no denying that welder smashed this out. Now comes the best part of welding with flux core, clean up. Done. Easy as that. Next job on the list is getting this front hatch welded on the boat. The noise that you can hear down the bottom is Birk. Where is he? There. He's um, cleaning up some of the plates that we're going to be welding in. Cleaning them up with a flap wheel, just getting it ready to weld. So it's nice, new, bare, lovely steel. And then I'm going to be doing the same on the front deck. This is the hatch up the front. You might remember that a while ago we put this big drum for our anchor chain. We need to just clean all of this edge up so that we can start welding the material back in again. We were getting withdrawals. Next week is going to be a bit of a weld fest. Really want to show you this new welder. We used it to clean up the front end and put the old steel that we took out back in. That's just one of the jobs. Beck went for a bit of an excursion. This is the hatch getting lifted back up, tacked into place and welded on. The solar gets ripped off, amongst other jobs. <laughs> 